The music industry is full of propaganda machines where swaying artists' opinions one way or another, and you're getting caught up playing yourselves, willfully doing something that's gonna hurt you over and over again because it seems like the new best thing to do. But if you don't wanna get caught slipping, listen to this episode, cause it all starts with TikTok and Universal. We're about to break down how. I'm Brand Man Sean, and I'm Corey, and this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. All right, all right, so how does TikTok and Universal really reflect a moment in time where artists' opinions are being swayed and tripping artists up over and over again? Well, the big thing in this moment is an artist, a big artist that y'all don't follow, a lot of y'all don't listen to, but I, I promise you, if you listen to this breakdown of this situation, you'll realize how what Taylor Swift has done with Universal is a big reflection of everything every artist should be listening to from ground up. I'm talking about indie, you just launched tomorrow. This is extremely relevant. Just let me read this snippet and me and Corey will tell you how. Now, Dan Rancy, shout out to Dan, founder of Trapital. Y'all got to check out Trapital if y'all don't know what it is. He's made a post on LinkedIn and said, why don't Taylor Swift and her record label Universal Music Group see eye to eye on TikTok? Because they have competing incentives. Universal Music Group's role is to maximize revenue from recorded music, publishing, and merchandise. But Taylor Swift, like most artists, have other focuses beyond sales and don't want to cut off a promotional opportunity to boost those. TikTok is a big reason why the Eras Tour became a billion dollar phenomenon and it was a promotional engine for her tour and concert film. I'm sure Taylor would be welcome to higher payouts from TikTok, but not at the expense of not being able to use it when she releases her new album. Then it gets into how rich Taylor is. Just money, money, money everywhere. Percentage here and that. Y'all don't need to hear that part necessarily. But there's a few topics that we get from this. All right. Corey wrote three topics. I wrote four by mistake. But one of them, we're extremely aligned. And this is the big one that every artist needs to listen to. And then there's two more that I know for sure. Corey, pick your poison. Which topic do you want to start off with? The one that I wrote down. But uh, is that one that you wrote down? Yeah. Uh, let's do let's do incentives. Let's start All right, that. perfect. I think that's the best place to start because I feel like it li- aligns with what you wrote: conflict of interest. So what I meant when I said incentives, right, is yes, me as an artist, if I, yes, I want to make as much money as possible from TikTok, mm-hmm. right, but I have more incentives than just making money on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I also have my tour. I also have my movie that I'm putting out, my merch. Now, in some cases, like with Taylor Swift, you may or may not be in bed with your label in terms of the merch side, but there's so many other vehicles to how artists make their money. And most artists make money, most of their money actually, to this day, in things beyond the music itself. Mm -hmm. So the label, they're like, we wanna maximize this, this music. Like the hard, the music specifically itself, and we're willing to go to fight with TikTok about it. Taylor's like, yeah, I appreciate that fight. However, <laughs> I got a lot of other money on the table. Mm-hmm. So if you told TikTok, this is only 1% of our revenue stream. We can keep moving and we won't be hurt by that as like a threat. But even as I said in that moment, I'm like, eh, but what about how much is that to the individual artists? Yep. You know, yep. <laughs> it's impacting their business beyond. So incentive. What's the incentive for your label? It doesn't always mean just the label though, because y'all hear labels like, I'm not gonna sign anyway. Your manager, or we just did an episode basically. Anybody you're dealing with, there's always these incentives one way or another. And if you can't be on the same page, and you should also work as the as the leader of your business. I know y'all don't want to be the leader of y'all business to make sure all the incentives are in line or you can have moments like this. Yeah, or or at least knowing where to pick certain fights, where to move certain pieces based on who you know these incentives uh, align with, right? Cause, Cause I can understand that, right? Like Tyler's probably looking at like, hey, TikTok is 1% of your revenue. Like you said, if we're looking at pure music, but I'm I'm sure she's doing the math in terms of like, but how much how much of my revenue comes from just the access to people on this platform, right? So like you said, it's like, hey, maybe I am a piece that allows you to increase streaming payouts on there by however many cents, but it's never going to equate to the raw cold dollars, you know what I'm saying, that translate from the people that are going to see my posts and then come over and and, and monetize and, and all these other ways I have built up. And if you, you know, 
pay attention to Taylor, or at least for those that don't, Taylor, for at least the last like three or four of her album releases, always makes sure she has some type of like direct to fan sale or experience always. or something that's going on yep. at the same time that she's pushing everything else. We know that vinyls are, are really huge for her. She's been very vocal about that. And all the things that Taylor seems to be focused on at this moment in her career seem to all revolve around unique experiences and ideas and then how can I sell those ideas and experiences to my fans? And I think that slides and segues into the second point that I think maybe me and you both actually made. It's, it's similar. Well, I, I said the value of taking less money, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll skip to my third one. The value of taking less money is, as an artist, mm -hmm. yeah. people are being tricked today or just artists, a lot of indie artists specifically, are not seeing business for business mm -hmm. at the moment. And they're hamstringing their own businesses by not taking advantage of all of the opportunities they have, whether that's Spotify, whether that's TikTok, right? Whether that's Instagram, you might not be getting paid what you want to get paid, right? That's a real thing. I get it. But like I said, Taylor Swift, she probably wants to get paid more too. Why would she say, I don't want more money from TikTok? However, at the same time, because as a matter of fact, Taylor Swift was the one who held out on Spotify mm -hmm. to release her music she later. Is, she held out, yeah, she yeah. held out individually yeah. on Spotify. Yep. However, like, you still have to understand the rest of your business. Are you willing to kill off your business today, right? Just because I don't like what Spotify is paying off when you could actually still find new fans through that and push them down the funnel, right? You just have to understand this is a part of your business and it might be a part of your business that, you know, is not your most lucrative in terms of um, like direct cash, mm -hmm. but the algorithm, whether it's on Instagram, TikTok, or Spotify, the, any of the DSPs, there's still benefit and you, ha you can't cut off the marketing aspect of it because every fan base goes through phases. And if you're not constantly growing and providing a certain level of access, especially as a small business, mm -hmm. to cut off the arteries like that, the blood the blood pumping to the artery, what are you doing to your business tomorrow? It sounds good today, but just like in sales, I made five, 10 calls today and they're gonna start showing up like a week or so from now when I have a bunch of meetings. If you stop making five, 10 calls a day, all right, next thing you know, two weeks later, you are be like, how come I don't have any meetings on my calendar? Mm -hmm. How come I'm not making any sales? It's like, well, yeah, you didn't feel it at first, but you slow down your activity. So you got to fill the funnel over and over again. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I go back to me. I think it is, I do think it is a reflection of like where Taylor's brain is at currently in her artist career. Cause I mean, at this point, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure streaming revenue is important to her. You know, obviously she, she's still dropping music, but I will argue that at this point in her career, I mean, she has so much of a back catalog set up that she's probably not hurting for money from streaming. And like I said, like if you pay attention to her last like three or four releases, she's really heavily invested on direct to fan stuff, like direct to consumer stuff. And so to make your point, right, it's like, you know, you, you put the value of taking less money and we're talking about in context of making less money per stream or per play on TikTok. But then in reality, it's like abiding by Universal's play would be her taking less money because she wouldn't be able to benefit off of the stuff that she is prioritizing. So it's like, hey, and even if they did, right, I can't imagine that the extra two to three cents or whatever the Universal is fighting for is, is still going to make up for what she would lose if she couldn't push her vinyl directly to her followers on there or if she couldn't, you know what I'm saying, convince these people to go to the theater to see her show. And and, and Taylor is one of the artists, you know, one of the, the, the big players that, actually does social media really well you know what i'm saying like she she yeah. she grinds it out like she just started making music a couple months ago you know what i'm saying and so that's why i say i think it speaks a lot to what where taylor's brain is at which i think speaks a lot to where a lot of artists should be thinking to um and it is how can i create this funnel around my music that really leads to these outside things that i you know and this is maybe a bit more for label artists but it's how can I push this traffic to something where I profit more off of and have more control over it, right? Cause you- Nah, that's not a label artist thing. That's, cause again, Spotify would be that for an artist, true. right? Yeah, Spotify, yeah. DSPs, yeah. everywhere, like everybody has at least that core, the social media and DSPs. How can I push to something else to make more? But if you just think about pushing these to these other spaces where your fans don't exist, mm -hmm. 
then you're selling yourself short because you have to meet people where they are. You're, you're, and you're just creating more space. If you don't, especially if you don't have a big audience, yep. all right? To you're creating more space for your fans to just forget about you and to care less. Like if you're at a certain level and you're like, okay, I like the amount of fans I, I have now. I don't really care about growing my fan base. And I just want to act like a business who comes, uh, no, actually more of a private equity firm that inside, instead tries to grow the business, just comes in and extracts the value from the current business. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing to your audience as an artist. Um, when you say, all right, my audience is this side. Oh, I can go direct a fan and, I, and never engage with my audience on these platforms in a fruitful way. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just extracting all the value. Take, 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 take. And at some point you're going to hit a, um, a wall where you don't see any growth because that that prior growth that you invested in is going to slow down yep. and you didn't put any new investments in and you're, you might fall, you might experience like a deep drop off depending on how deep you went with your fans. Yep. Right. Yep. So you have to keep fueling both sides. I, for, for me, I had the point of train yourself to do two things at once. All right. That's the today versus tomorrow aspect of things. Like for an artist, you have to recognize that today might not be as great as you want to in terms of how much value you're getting from from um, from any of these platforms from your art. You have to constantly fight for a better tomorrow because the industry's so screwed up. There's so many things to fight for. You have to all you have to fight for a better tomorrow constantly while maximizing what's actually available today. Yep. Right. But a lot of artists are being told that they should just throw a fit and you know hold their hands together start pouting and not participate in the things that are going to bring value in for them today when they don't even have anything to stand on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Kill it. laughs> but, but really like that's just the reality. And I feel like everybody's working for that reality in many ways, whether you're an artist um, and other people in different parts of life for whatever reason, you, you can't just, just throw it out. If you want to do best and the artists that artists are all, like admiring the other artists who came up and they're taking advice, whether that's a, a artist who's like big traditional industry, or we're looking at like some of the like shining names and like indie side of things. Yep. The artists that you're looking at did that same thing. Yep. They take advantage of today while also hedging for tomorrow and trying to figure out how can I make my tomorrow better? You got to do both. If you, if you don't, then you'll be one of those people who are just admiring the artists and looking at all these cool indie artists and you're just a fan. Like you're, that's the problem. There's a lot of artists that are fanning out on other artists in their journey versus looking at it as a, from a consumer standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's no difference than like a business person looking at other business people, like from an influencer. Oh, like I like the way they move. They're, they're my favorite entrepreneur. Oh, I love Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or, you know, whoever the popular entrepreneurs are that people like but they're not actually starting a business and running a business. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's just like fanboy stuff. Yeah. Like artists are doing that with other artists at this point versus looking how, and how they actually went about their journey before they start talking about this X, Y, Z, how did they come up? Right. And it might be a little different for me now. The marketplace might've changed. So you might not be to use that route, but you got to pay attention to the principles like of what they're focusing on now, but what were they focusing on at the time when they were where you were? Let's take a quick commercial break to talk about Spotify Discovery Mode, one of the most powerful tools when it comes to marketing music today because it puts your music in the algorithm on Spotify to be listened to along with music similar to you without you having to run ads, without you having to do any content at all, which is why a lot of artists tell me they love it. But a lot of artists don't necessarily have access to Spotify Discovery Mode unless you're a two loss user because with two loss, all artists have a fair shot at getting access to Spotify discovery mode just by submitting through them. And they pitch all of their artist music to Spotify to be considered for discovery mode. So if you don't meet the criteria, if you are in the position where some of the larger artists are sign up for two loss distribution at two loss.com. That's T O O lost.com because that's just one of many extremely valuable features that two loss offers to his artists to make their lives easier and you can try out two loss for free by using the code no label that's n-o-l-a-b-e-l when you sign up so go to two loss.com and check out how you can get your music heard everywhere yeah exactly that's why i said i think if you look at this closely you can see 
she is prioritizing direct to consumer relationships over catalog building, which I think says a lot about where her and her team see the future of music going, right? If, if one of the largest streaming artists in the world is putting their focus on things other than streaming, like that, that tells me something, you know what I'm saying? It's like, even with all the numbers of success she's getting, she still feels like, no, we need to expand over here. Mm -hmm. Right, and to your point, all the artists that I believe focus on direct to consumer relationship push themselves in a position to where they truly can play the middle. Like they really can be like, hey, no matter where this shit goes, I'll be okay. If I do wanna fuck with Spotify, cool, I can. If I don't, you know what I'm saying? Either way, I'm fine because of this thing that I've kind of built up that, that protects me. And to your point, I think that it's something that is commendable because it's probably one of the few bigger artist strategies that like a like any artist could start to implement, right? You know what I'm yep. saying? It's like, yo, just yep. be more intentional about how you talk to your fans, how you give them experiences, collecting their information, providing things other to them outside of the music, which a part of me feels like what's so hard about that for smaller artists to do is because it, it, it forces them in a position to admit that music isn't as valuable as they may believe or have been taught to believe. But I think the reason we see a lot of bigger artists you know, the, at least the really smart ones like happily jump into the DDC waivers because they've been in the game long enough to understand that there's more to this success than just the music where most smaller artists are still looking at like, oh, it's just the music that's gonna get me there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, he said, tell us well, like damn near 15 plus years and that's some shit. She, she's probably learned so many lessons that have taught her like, hey, like, like I said, like, hey, this is cool. It's always gonna be here for me, but it has yet to provide the value that I want to provide, and I am who I am. You know, so I would wake up thinking that, like, damn, I'm Taylor Swift, and I, I'm still like, ain't getting what I feel like I yeah. deserve. You know what I'm saying? Like, something needs to change. And you know, I give her kudos for being one of the bigger artists that is willing to risk not only their relationships with their different stakeholders, right? Because she, like you said, she pressed against Spotify, and then here she is today pressing against Universal. Yep. Um, so not only one of the artists of that size that are willing to even buck against their their partners to do it, but then to actually stick the landing and ride all the way out Bruh. and give us a blueprint yeah. for it. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. I mean, I think, one, because of the internet, this is not new. Every single industry has become more direct to consumer. Like, yeah. It created that ac accessibility point. Yeah. Like So for artists who are just the, those of y'all who don't pay attention to other verticals, there is a... a a lot of companies, just the products that you see in the stores. You've seen this with mattresses. You've seen this with Too Faced, facial creams. When they were going into the retail stores, they had to give big cuts. Just yeah. like you have your record label going to these different re uh, retailers, they, they have to pay these big cuts. They distribution fees. Distribution fees. <laughs> they don't have as direct relationship in, with their audience. Mm -hmm. So the data, they're not capturing that data themselves. Mm -hmm. So when they had the ability to start just marketing online and you see all these brands pop up where it'll be a regular product face, uh, brand and you see a bunch of ads, you know why you see a whole bunch of ads? Cause they're building brands and their whole primary channel is I'm running ads, I'm on social media. And then at some point they might get big enough where the old companies like a label might say, oh man, look at this hot, fresh new brand. I'm gonna buy that brand, mm -hmm. right? But it's the same thought. I can go online, direct to consumer, not cut out the middleman, have a higher margin, have a better relationship with my customers, which allows me to do better marketing and do future marketing and relationship building, which creates even higher margin, right? And build a legitimate brand that allows this to be a sellable asset or just a profitable asset without all the headaches of dealing with all the other people that are in the traditional, like retail, label, however you wanna, wanna face it. So it's not like, one, this isn't like a genius thing that artists are, are doing, right? This isn't a genius thing that the music industry is coming up with or a realization. It's not like that. Opening their eyes. Yeah, it's like this is just the reality of where the world is going, period, because of the impact of the internet, then social media, and the tools that are going to continue to come. But what people have to be rea uh, realistic about is, and, and actually, I, and I don't want, I don't, some people might take that as discouraging or dissing. Uh, like artists or something like that but it, to me no that should be an encouraging that's just the reality of no this is just where shit is going and it's not going to stop like you really don't have to do as much work as you think from an artist and all we got to push up against and press up no this is just coming this will be the labels are adjusting to it and know it's coming just as much as artists it's not that artists are like 
you know, chipping away at labels like that. Mm -hmm. They're delaying it so they have more time to like adjust. They're trying to like slow and then maximize in there today, mm -hmm. but also they're adjusting for tomorrow. It's the same things on on all sides. But I feel like you basically said that yeah, Taylor was investing heavily more in the direct consumer side versus the catalog. But the reality is she put herself in a position. She got a fan base first. Yeah, we right. cannot escape the fan base. Yeah, You need to have a fan base. If you focus more about direct to consumer, direct to fan, and then you try to use those type of campaigns before you even have it, it's like direct to who? Right? Like, I don't exist yet. You, you can't market to those who do not exist. So you still got to go through building the fan base up in the first place, whether you indie, whether you, you major. Uh, the if You can get caught up in all these different types of campaigns what the industry set is saying um is going to happen or not and then when you end up like on the side of the road abandoned and wondering why the industry kept moving and how come you didn't become successful is because you still are trying to skip the process forgot about the principles you let other people rile you up and think about direct to fan when you forgot to go get fans you know what i'm saying and it becomes like the crypto market. To me, this is going to be a version of some level of crypto market when you see a lot of artists get misled, misguided, because I remember artists, in particular some prominent artists, and, and these are in like more private conversations, saying stuff to me like, yo, in a year, the NFTs are going to be taking over everything. Oh, yeah. I believe Spotify is going to be damn near dead. All these things are going to be shifted. And guess what? Here we are. Here we are. That was in 2020, <laughs> 2021. And we're st that hype is gone. Things have moved on, mm -hmm. right? And, and nobody's thinking that it's about to topple the industry this year, not in five years, maybe in 10 years, right? And you, you think about the idea of direct-to-consumer. You just told me about a band that was doing that, uh, Pearl Jam. You said they were doing that in like some yeah, like late 90s. Late 90s, some direct-to-consumer yeah. stuff they were doing. And we know a lot of artists, um, even in hip hop, were doing things like that. We, we know so many examples of this that has always existed. Yes, this is a moment in time where there's a marketing hype behind it because yeah. people are pushing different initiatives and platforms and things like that. But if you forget the primary thing, I got to build a fan base, then how can you take advantage of whether it's new tools that'll pop up, new uh, fan behaviors, but the reality still is our fans ready for this. Yeah, no, and I, I think you hit the the nail on the head, right? Like I think, you know, you watch these bigger artists, especially the indie ones who are a bit more vocal, mm -hmm. you feel like they're 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 borderline giving you the blueprint. And I do think it riles artists up to to I guess mistakenly try to skip like the first half of the process, right? Cause I, I've talked to artists like that where they, they come in, they want to work and they're like, hey, I want to sell this album to some fans. I don't even want to hit Spotify. And you know, I have the conversation where it's like, hey, I'm gonna be real with you. Like, I mean, hey, you know, talk your shit, buck the system all you want, but you're not in a position to buck the system. At this point, you need to be friends with this. So you need to learn everything you can about the system, yeah. play the game of the system for as long as you can, and then you can buck it. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of artists mess up. A lot of artists are trying to fight against, trying to fight a battle that they don't really understand, right? They, they, yeah. they, they've heard about the enemy. They've seen the enemy get talked about. They've seen other examples of other people fight, fighting the enemy, they, but they themselves have never truly gone against the enemy. How does it exist? Why does it exist? Yeah. Because there's a truth that nobody wants to admit. Making money off of music at scale is extremely difficult. Very difficult, yeah. Like, and that's why the industry exists the way it does exist. Because it's so hard, things are gonna become easier and easier over time, but you're already dealing with intellectual property. Yep. We're not dealing with hard products. We're dealing with intellectual property. So technology to even track and understand intellectual property at such a micro level didn't even exist. These platforms didn't even exist to be able to do it in the same way before this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're still building things out like the um, the blockchain and things like that that are going to help be able to do that at scale and track IP when it's on these other platforms. Right. So, if, you know, on one side, you get a noise where you post a song. And then 
you know, it gets muted on your video or it gets taken down because you have somebody else's music. But now we actually have the te technology to be able to track your shit in that way. That's actually a good thing if we're thinking about for the artists and monetizing um, in the long term, because that's going to allow you to be able to get value for when it gets used. And now we know, oh, your song is being used across the world where people, their shit would just be stolen back in the day and they would never know. People have a whole hit in India, you know what I mean? And they had no idea, yeah. you know what I mean? That their music was popping. And so like, you have to realize this is a hard industry already because of the nature of it being IP and trying to monetize it and thinking about people with less resources trying to build a business off of IP, that idea alone is a tall task. Then you think about consumption behavior to actually market IP and get people to consume IP at scale. You need some level of centralization. Mm -hmm. So if we take it to everybody gets off of Spotify, nobody has Spotify. Now we're just talking about a bunch of people hustling on their blocks, essentially, which that's cool. Y'all, if, if some people want that, y'all can say that's cool. But the reality is you're just going to end up complaining about the artist instead of the labels because you're going to be like, ah, the way he's hustling on his block, uh, he don't even have real music. He's just a good salesman. Yeah, that's true. That's what the new industry is going to look like even more so. It's going to be less about the labels and the money they have. It's going to be about the artists who got the personalities and understand how to, how to really sell themselves and scream louder and things like that. That's just going to become more and more of a thing as you have like more and more fragmentation because people are going to have to figure out how to get attention. Yeah, the artists that are going to win are going to be the artists that understand that music isn't the end all be all. And not necessarily to a degree to where I'm saying that there's going to be more artists making lesser quality work, but there are going to be artists that understand that, hey, just because I have produced uh, what I consider to be a high quality piece of music, it's, it's not the end of the road. Like this is, this is I've done like 8% of the work realistically, you know what I'm saying? There's gonna be some who stop at the 8%, don't see the rest of the 92, and then be confused on why they're not moving. And then there's gonna be the rest, like you said, like maybe I can't play the whole 100%, but I can play up to 80%, and, and then to your point, all the yep. all the people behind me talking shit. Bro, <laughs> and you're gonna see a lot more of the industry get affected in the same way that street music got affected. What do you mean? Street music was born out of the streets, the thoughts, the struggles that come from the street, the certain lifestyle, the hustling, and all these things, right? But after a while, in hip hop sp specifically, it became an opportunity to get out, period, yeah. right? Yeah. It's just a way of making money. Yeah. And now there's other genres because of the content machine on social media and being able to get, like, break through the noise. That way, a lot of people are like, oh, if I could just be a personality and I could latch that on with music. I can just use music as a way to make money. Like I can, it's a part of my hustle. It's not, oh, I'm an artist. It's it's a part of my hustle. And there's a lot of people who are hybrid. There's some people who are hybrid. I'm a I'm a hustler slash artist. And then there's some people who are just a straight hustler. And you're like, man, that music nowhere near good. But they know how to like entertain and make it things fit, hustle, yeah. right? So the artsy artist who is only about the art, like things are only going to get worse in that regard, mm -hmm. right? In terms of now your peers and the way things are, uh, the way things people are competing. Like the times of, hey, it's just about the music and now the whole system is working for you. Like we could get into the financials and how things got split down and fair splits and label system, how it was tr being treating you back in the day. But there was a time where you could literally spend all your time on just the music though. That was a real thing. Be create the best product possible and then the system will handle the rest for you. Now you got to be divided more and more in terms of your attention and abilities, unless you unless you are one of the few artists who are going to pop up that end up having like just the right team members that know how to push everything for them. You're going to have bets. some of those. those yeah. Huh? It's a little four bat situation. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just had to think about it. I was like, I don't want to, you know, I, I had to think about what I said, what she said, you know what I mean? <laughs> But that's actually a good place, a place to end this episode. <laughs> this is yet another episode of No Label Necessary Podcast. I'm Redman Shaw. And I'm Carter. And we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is 
we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.